Hello, my darling artists. It's me again, Mrs. Day. Today we're going to do a guided drawing of Al from Alpacas with Maracas. So, to start with, find the center of your page, yeah? Point to the center of your page and very lightly, lightly, ever so lightly, draw a line across the middle, fairly big. And then going to um, curve off the edges, draw them all the way down to the bottom of the page. Just draw lightly because then if you make a bubble, you can rub it out and no one will ever know. So I'm going to use a tin of tuna because it's nice and small and perfectly round. And I'm going to use it as the template for the snout. So place it about in the middle of the weird upside down U shape that you've just done and give it a trace. It's okay to use a template Many famous artists use templates to create perfect circles. To do this little section here, we're going to make it's a, it looks like a triangle, isn't it? So we're going to do a little bit of a triangle shape just above the snout. So just do it lightly. See how I've created a bit of a, a triangle shape there. And then you can bring that up like a middle part. And then instead of just going straight across, let's give it a bit of extra shape and shape it out so it looks like the top of his head. Same with this side. Shape it up. Make it look like somebody's hair. And then this bit here is going to be coloured in black later. Then you can just start putting in the texture of his hair. And this side here, you know what I'll do? I'm going to make it come over the circle just a little bit on that side. That's what I did here as well. You can see that there. Then I'm going to put the texture of his hair in here as well. And on this side as well, I'm going to make some of it go over his snout. If you make a little wobbly line that you don't really like, it's okay because later on you're going to be outlining it with a black marker. So you've got plenty of time to fix it up later. So in the center of your circle, do a great big smiley mouth. Probably should have done this before, but I've got to be carried away by doing the awesome hair. Okay, and then just do a big mouth, an open mouth like that. Remember, do it lightly because you've got to be rubbing some of this out. And then do a big weird tooth, right? Big weird tooth. And then you're going to do his lovely great big tongue. Do his great big tongue in there. And now you can rub out all the bits that you don't want. And then we need to do his little beautiful nose. So do a line up the center and a little candy cone for his nostrils. There. Let's do his ears. So on, let's line them up with the edge of his snout. Go. So get your pencil, line it up close to the top of the page. Same with this side. Do a dot. And then you can do his ears. Now try not to make his ears look like cat's ears. They are kind of long... They're more long and skinny, these ears. Then you can draw a line to give the inside of his ears a little bit of shape and character. Now, to give him some texture to make his ears look furry, we're just going to put some lines in there. It's implied texture, meaning it's not actually texture, it's texture. If it was real texture, we'd be gluing on some fake fur. Then we would it would feel like it, the texture of real fur. But this is us drawing in the texture so we call it implied texture let's give him some fairy insides of his ears as well
then you can rub out all of your pencil lines. Make sure that you wait till the texture has dried, otherwise you will um, smudge the texture. I'm just going to use tempera paint that we use in our classroom, but you can use whatever paints you've got. If you don't have paints at home, don't panic, because you can colour it in with whatever you've got. Crayons, textures, pencils, chalk, whatever. Swizzle it, swizzle a bit of water in there. Um, make it nice and watery. And we're not going to paint the whole thing in solidly today. We're going to create highlights and shadows. So we're going to um, make some of the hair look like it's got a bit more texture and a bit of light shining on it every now and then. So just paint little lines of brown every now and then. Mostly, I'd say, around the tips because if you look at the pictures in the, in the book, a lot of his... Uh, pictures seem to be a bit darker around the tips and he goes a little bit kind of blonder on the top probably because that's where the sun shines on his head so don't be too fussy about staying in the lines with this because we're going to outline it later on and cut it out Now I'm going to switch over to a lighter colour to give him some highlights. So I'm just going to activate that paint, get it nice and watery, get lots of water onto it, activate it, and then just fill in the rest of it. Don't try not to go too much over the top of what you've already done. Don't worry if your black marker bleeds. It'll just add a little bit of uh, je ne sais quoi to your art. Fill in all the white spaces. Don't leave any little white gaps. Just fill them in. Now I'm going to swap over to a smaller brush and I'm going to paint the inside of his mouth and I'm just going to activate a little bit of pink to go in there. It's a small brush for a small area. I used a bigger brush on a bigger area. As I mentioned in the video for Maca, if you want to make your grey a little bit lighter, just add water. The more water you add to your grey, the lighter it'll become. That's creating value. There's the finished owl. Let him dry. Don't be tempted to start cutting it out while it's uh, still wet because otherwise it will be very difficult to cut out and uh, you'll probably ruin it because it'll rip and tear and then you'll get all sad and someone will cry and then it's not going to be very fun for anybody. So have some patience and let it dry. Time to do the background for our little owl, the owl packer. We're going to do it as a watercolour resist. So to do that, we're going to use oil pastels or you'll need to use crayons. If you don't have either of those, don't worry. Just colour your background in however you like, trying to make it look like the stripes on the maracas. When we put the paint on top of our waxy crayon or oily oil pastel you'll notice that the watery color will soak into the paper but it will resist soaking in wherever there is oil or wax let's have a look see that it soaks right into the paper but it doesn't cover up our beautiful line oh no do you know what i should have done i should have followed the shape 
let's do that from now on let's leave this section here to dry and move down to the, another section to paint if we paint underneath that's what we should have been doing see that making it zigzag see mrs day it's all right to make a mistake and guess what mrs day well done you didn't cry and you didn't get upset good girl you're so good don't paint directly underneath a wet color because the two colors will bleed into each other and ain't nobody got time for that know what i'm saying See how the water is soaking into the page, but it's really resisting soaking in to wherever I've drawn the crayon, the oil pastel line. It's a bit fancy. It's really cool, isn't it? Now, to fix up this mistake that I did earlier, I'm just going to do that. Okay, that's finished now so let that one dry sit it in a nice sunny spot for a little while let that dry and then while that's drying you can cut this uh, part of your art out when you're cutting it out sometimes I go like this I'll show you I'll cut all of one direction at a time and then I'll go back and cut the other direction So for example, now I'll just go back and do all of that direction. Don't tear it too much, you've got to make sure you cut it right. If you try tearing it, you run the risk of ruining your artwork. So I've just cut that out and I've noticed that some of my cutting out I've got some little uh, white spots that where the paper was a bit hard to cut out so I'm just going to go over and re-outline some some bits and um, you know what you could also do is re just actually re-outline the entire thing wherever you put any black marker outline it again go over where the paint has covered your original black drawings black marks once you've finished outlining it it will look a lot like that um oh my goodness what a mess who did who did all that mess oh yeah sorry that was me i did all this mess here we're going to put all of our rubbish in the bin and you know what if you notice your brothers or sisters or somebody else in your house making a mess why don't you be like a good samaritan and just clean up their mess for them. You don't have to say, oh, I cleaned up their mess. Oh, it was me. Eh. Just be a good Samaritan and do it quietly. Clean. Now, remember this dodgy bit down here where I made a mistake. I forgot to do it wavy. I did it straight across. So down that section, I'm going to turn that oopsie into a beautiful oops. I'm going to turn it into something beautiful. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm when I glue this down, instead of that being the top now I'm going to make that the bottom so when you glue this down cover that with glue and make sure you line up the bottom of our with the bottom of your paper your colored paper and then just glue it down like that glue it down glue 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 and there voila that dodgy line that I did that was a bit of an oopsie mistake turned I turned it into something beautiful now it's gone and no one will ever know now if you've got rough edges on the side of your paper like that obviously cut it off and when it's all finished and outlined neatly you will have your beautiful owl the owl packer <laughs>